Hi again, everyone. Chris Tisdell here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my series of videos on mathematics and a beginner's guide to calculus. Now, in previous videos, we looked at functions and exponentials. In this video, we're going to continue in that vein and I'm going to talk about logarithms. So we're going to talk about why logarithms are important, what they are, and how to apply ideas from logarithms. So, this is where we're going. The need for logarithms, some important log or logarithm laws, and of course, how to apply the laws. Now, before I get down to telling you what a logarithm is, let's talk about why, why logarithms are important. Well, historically, logarithms started with a mathematician called John Napier, and they were used to simplify multiplying large numbers. Now, you may have heard of log-log plots. They can be used to simplify um, graphing of data. Now, in previous videos, we talked about exponentials and exponential functions. And you can't really talk about a logarithm without talking about an exponential. So just to refresh your memory, this is, say, an exponential function. So 2 to the x might be an exponential function. The base is 2, the exponent and the variable is, is x. Um, and the graphs look a little bit like, like this. Say 2 to the x might look like that. OK? All right. So. In a nutshell, logarithms are the opposite of exponents. That's about as simple as I can put it. So what does that actually mean? Logarithms reverse the process of exponentiation. Okay, they're like the opposite. They, they, they're the reverse process. In mathematical terms, we could go a little further and say logarithms are the inverse operation to exponentiation. So they undo the exponents. Okay, let's dive into that a bit deeper. So suppose we have an equation like this. a to the x equals b, where a and b are numbers. So it could be something like 2 to the x equals uh, 10. And suppose you want to solve that equation for x. It's not so easy. It's not, not straightforward what the value of x should be. What we do is we define the logarithm of b to base a to be the solution to this equation. Okay? And we write it in this log b to base a type notation. I've just put the x in here to saying, well, this is what the v value of x is that solves this equation up here. Okay, so the, a, the, the base goes in there, the b goes over there, and the exponent goes here. Okay, but generally you'll just say that's the solution to this problem. So let's do an example. Suppose I was looking at the equation 10 to the x equals 90. The way we define this, the logarithm for that is the solution would be log 90 to base 10. Okay? Okay. So logarithms undo exponents. Now, what do logarithms look like graphically? Well, I am glad you asked. Here is a curve. So this might be... Uh, the green curve might be 2 to the x. The corresponding logarithm curve is basically just the, the same curve reflected in the line y equals x. So this is this function here, log x to base 2. Let me just bring that down a bit more. Okay, Okay. so there's a reflection going on here in the line y equals x. 
So that's a pretty easy way. If you can draw the exponential, you can always draw the corresponding um, logarithm, the inverse function, just by reflecting it in the line y equals x. Okay, so there are some really important logarithm laws. These are ways to help you simplify things involving logs or solve and uh, simplify and solve problems. Okay, so the first problem is a product to sum formula. So you've got the log of a product, you can just add the logarithms together. The second is a quotient to difference rule. So you've got a quotient here, you can change it to a difference. The third one is a power rule. So you've got p to the power, uh, b to the power p, you can bring the p to the front. And um, the log of one to any base is zero. Now, these can all be proved using exponentiation or index laws. Okay, now I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to spend my time doing a, a, an example or two, um, but I may do another video on the proofs of that. Okay, so for the special case when A is this magic number E, which comes from calculus, it's an irrational number, we tend to change the notation a little bit. We write log to base E as LN. So this gets replaced with this. Okay, now it's generally, why do we do that? Well, generally um, we don't want to keep writing out LOG sub E. I guess you write LM for natural logarithm. All right, so in that case, for whenever we use the LN notation, you have this special base E. It's just, just known to do that. Okay, so you have the log, natural log of E is just one because that's just the log of E to base E. And there's also a change of base law, which allows you to write any logarithm in terms of a quotient involving the same base. So C could be any suitable number here. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about these, but we're going to use these things to um, solve some of our problems now. Okay, so let's do some real simple examples and we can see if we can solve these problems here. Okay, so simplify the following expressions in terms of log A, log B, or log C. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, let's start with this. Firstly, we've got a quotient there, but let's write it firstly as a power. Okay, so if I look here, I can go, well, okay, I've got a power there. Let's take the power to the front. And now I'm just left with my quotient. So this is an LN here. Okay, so now I, so I've used the power law. Now I can use quotient to difference. So it'll be okay. Natural log of a minus the natural log of b. So this is this is enough now for the first one. So I use two things: the the power rule and the quotient to sum, a uh, quotient to difference rule. And here, the, I know they look a bit like E's, but they're all LN's, natural logs, okay? So we know the base is, is clear, it's clearly E. Okay, part two. Simplify this in terms of log A, log B, and log C, all natural logs. Okay, so here I've got a quotient. Let's use our quotient to difference law. I'm going to put brackets in here just to make it a little bit clearer what I'm taking the logs of. And now I can use a, write this as a power and use a power law. Over here, I can use product 
to some laws. Okay, so so now I can use my power law so the power comes to the front so this will come to the front this will come to the front and this will come to the front and then i'm done and that'll do it so logarithms are important because they help us simplify calculations and historically they've helped us multiply large numbers together, dating back to John Napier. In calculus, they undo um, exponentiation and we're gonna see a lot of logs in, uh, and, and logs in, in functions and um, various parts of these calculus course. There are some basic rules that involves simplifying logarithm uh, expressions. And you can prove a lot of these just using exponentiation, okay? All right, hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. It's great to be back. I was at the Calculus World Cup in Taiwan. I had a blast. Um, hopefully, I'll share that stream with you soon. If you have any questions, any comments, I always love to get your, your feedback, so put them in the comments section. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.